Good morning. And welcome. It is wonderful to be with you again this Sunday. Uh, as I was last Sunday, I'm Pastor John Green. And it's a joy to worship here together today as we've gathered in our Lord's house. We will begin our worship this morning by singing together hymn number 908. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With upright heart be he shepherded them. He commanded the skies above. And he rained down on them manna to eat. Man ate of the bread of the angels. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. With upright heart he shepherded them. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son Jesus as the heavenly bread of life. Grant us faith to feast on him in your word and sacraments, that we may be nourished unto life everlasting. 
through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will go back and do the Kyrie at this point. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. You may be seated. Testament lesson this morning is recorded in the book of Exodus, the 16th chapter, beginning at the second verse. The whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness, and the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, where we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you who have brought us out of this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger, then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is recorded in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the fourth chapter. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high and led a host of captives, 
and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean? But that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is the gospel of our Lord. We continue by confessing together our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God, the Father of Thank you. maker of heaven and earth in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God. He will come to judge, to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the Gospel lesson from John, which was previously read and to which we will refer during the sermon. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you will recall that I said last week that we were going to have a two-part sermon, the first part of which was last week. The second part, which is going to be this week, we're in a place in scripture where Jesus is beginning his ministry. He's been at it for a little while now, and a lot of people have begun to hear about him, and as they hear about him, they have a lot of different ideas about who he is. We talked about that at great length last week. Who did the disciples say he was? The crowds, the Pharisees, all of these different groups of people. Today we're not going to look at who they think he is, but we're going to look at who Jesus says he is. Because Jesus knows who he is, he defines who he is very well to them, and he remains who he is, carrying out his Father's ministry, carrying out the plan of salvation on behalf of you and me. So I want today to look at five things that are true about Jesus and his defining of himself and who he is. First of all, the people are looking for Jesus in our text. John writes that when they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. 
Jesus sees what they're saying, and in a way, he doesn't answer their question directly, but he comes out with a truth about himself in terms of this. And he says to them, you know, you saw those signs. You saw the feeding of all those people from all that little bit of food. You've seen me do other things, other miracles. But the real reason why you're coming to me is because you have been fed. It's because you have eaten of the loaves and you have eaten of the fish. And it's a reminder to us that Jesus likes to use physical means in his ministry. Think about the time when there was a blind man and Jesus spit in the dirt and made some mud, put it on the blind man's eyes, and when he went to wash it off, he could see. Now, obviously, Jesus could have accomplished that without that physical mud. Jesus could have simply said a word, and the man would have been healed. It would have been taken care of immediately. But Jesus uses those physical means, not because he's doing some kind of magic trick, but because when he uses physical means, people remember. We remember tangible things. Think about as we will gather around our Lord's table here in just a few moments. What are we going to receive? We're going to take in our hand real bread. We're going to take in the cup real wine. And in, with, and under that bread and wine, we will receive our Lord's body and blood. Could our Lord have given us that and those gifts that he gives us of forgiveness and life and salvation? Could he have given us that without those physical means? Well, he certainly had the ability to. But Jesus recognizes that we understand that which we can touch and taste and see and feel, and he is pleased to use those as a part of that whole process, as a part of that sacrament. And in touching and tasting, we know and we remember. When we are baptized in the water and word of baptism, it is a combination of the water and the word. God is pleased to combine his word with that physical element of water. We know what water is, and we have the certainty that as that water hit our foreheads and the word of God was spoken, that God used that whole process, including that physical element, to bring us to faith in him. If you don't think that that water is some kind of physical element, just think about the child that's being brought to the font who's resting warmly in his mother's arms, quite content, and what sometimes happens when that cold water hits that child's forehead? You hear it. You hear the response. Because it's a physical, tangible thing. And God, at times, likes to use those physical, tangible things to remind us of who he is and to bestow on us his blessings. We continue on in our gospel lesson. Do not labor for food that perishes, Jesus says, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him, God the Father has set his seal. Jesus here is defining himself to the crowd as the one who gives eternal life and also as the one who, upon whom the Father has placed the seal of approval. The Father has placed the seal of approval for Jesus to be the one to carry out the mission. The mission that started all the way back in the garden when God made the pronouncement that he would send one who would crush the head of the serpent. And all the way through the time of the Old Testament, through Abraham's day, through Moses, through the prophets, all the way throughout, God was moving forward in his plan. And ultimately, ultimately he sent that one, he sent his son Jesus, born of a woman, born under the law, who lived a perfect life, who died on the cross, and who would rise again for our salvation. And Jesus defines himself as that one who would fulfill that mission ultimately that our Heavenly Father has given to him. You'll remember the Father made that proclamation at the time of Jesus' baptism as he comes up out of the water and the Spirit descends on him like a dove. And the Father's voice speaks and says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Those words that the Father has said, Jesus echoes as he defines himself as the one who is to carry out that mission on behalf of you and on behalf of me also. 
they respond to this and they ask him the question, what must we do to be doing the works of God? Other translations put it this way, what must we do to be saved? What must we do to do that work of salvation? And Jesus replies to them in a very interesting way. He says, this is the work of God, that you believe on the one whom he has sent. Jesus there is talking about faith, and he's talking about works also. What must we do? You know, that was not only a big question in Jesus' day, but it was still a big question today. If we were to go out and survey people that we don't even know and to ask them, if you were to die tonight, what would happen to you? Many of them would say, well, I, I, I hope I would, would go to heaven. I hope I would go to be with God. And if we followed that question up by then asking them, well, what would make God want to bring you into his heavenly kingdom forever? A lot of those same people would respond by saying, well, I, I, I don't know, but I, I hope I've been good enough. I hope I've done the right things. I hope I've said the right things. I've tried not to hurt people. I've, I've, and, and they would continue along that vein, thinking in terms of what they maybe have done or haven't done, as if that was the way of salvation. But scripture is very clear. And it reminds us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that all there means all, every one of us. That none of us in our works has done enough to please God. None of us has done enough to bridge the gap of sin between ourselves and our Heavenly Father. So what must we do? Jesus says, believe. He says, I am the way, the truth and the life. He reminds us that it's not our works that bring us into heaven someday, but it is the completed perfect work of himself, the completed perfect work of Jesus Christ on your behalf and on mine that brings us forgiveness of sin, salvation, eternal life, a restored relationship with the Father. And everywhere he goes, Jesus is defining himself in that way, telling people that that's who he is. And we, of course, rejoice over that. Later, they want to talk about Moses, and they want to talk about bread from heaven. And when they do, Jesus tells them, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus here is defining himself as the true bread from heaven. They want a sign. They want to be associated with something, too. That goes back to last week's sermon, doesn't it? They want to be associated with Moses. But Jesus reminds them it was not Moses who gave the bread. He was simply God's agent. But it was God who provided. Likewise, it is God who now is providing the living bread from heaven none other than Jesus, that he is the one who will feed them. He is the one who will give them the sustenance that they need. And fifth, Jesus also, at the end of this passage, in the very last verse, says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me will not thirst. Jesus here defines himself by saying, I am the bread of life pointing all the way back to the Old Testament, pointing all the way back into the burning bush where God said to Moses, I am. Tell them I am who I am has sent you. Jesus is identifying with that. We recognize him as the true God. And he defines himself that way by saying, I am the bread of life. As the bread of life, he indeed is the way of salvation. He's the one who provides for us and also himself saves us as well. If you remember from last week, as we talked about all of those different groups of people, we recognize that in some way, at some point, they all get it wrong to some degree. That Jesus has to come along here and, and define himself for them to know the truth and to know who he really is. It's a reminder also that we have all sinned again and fall short of the glory of God. But thanks be to God that Jesus knows exactly who he is 
clearly defines that for us and remains who he is for all time and for eternity, that he is the King of kings and Lord of lords, that he is the Savior, that he is the Messiah whom the Heavenly Father sent to accomplish for us what we could not do for ourselves. He doesn't let the anxiety of people get to him, but he continues to remain fixed on the goal. And as you see in subsequent gospel lessons to come, it is the salvation of your soul and mine through his death and resurrection. Thanks be to God for who Jesus is, and thanks be to God that as he points this out to us, he brings us forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. In Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone. A trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. We will continue with the offertory on page 159. Please stand.
we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this day that you have created. We thank you for the opportunity that we have as your people to gather together in your name here to worship you. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will indeed feed us this day through your word and in a moment as we come to your table, that you will bless us with your presence as you give us your body and blood in with and under the bread and the wine. Lord, we lift up before you all who are in need in these days of various kinds, especially those who need your physical healing hand. We ask for your presence and blessing to be with them. We thank you for the doctors and nurses and all who administer to their physical needs and ask for your blessing to be upon them as well. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to be with those who, who protect your people, that you will be with all police and fire, uh, our nation's military, first responders, and all who serve in these capacities. Lord, we also lift up before you prayers of thanksgiving for those who are celebrating anniversaries and birthdays this week. We pray for your continued presence and blessing to rest upon them as they seek to serve you all the days of their lives. We thank and praise you for your many blessings to us, especially what you have done for us in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. We continue now with the, serv the service of the sacrament as it begins on page 160. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Everlasting Father, especially for the good gifts that you bless us with, especially as we come to your table on this day, where we will give you praise, give you thanks and blessing, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had blessed it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, 
he gave it to them and said, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sin. Now may the eating of his body and the drinking of his blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith for life of the last day. Depart in his peace. of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the eating of his body and the drinking of his blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and the life everlasting. The party is peace. Welcome to our Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and eat the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and eat the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Lord bless and watch over you all of your days, so that you are God's dear child, made his in your baptism. Take and eat the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you.
share for you the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Now may the eating of his body and the drinking of his blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Savior Jesus Christ. The Lord bless and watch over you all good names, and that your God's new child may visit you at this time. Take and eat the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given for you the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and eat the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and eat the true body of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. to life everlasting. Lord, in his peace. Amen. Welcome to our Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. The Lord bless and watch over you always as God is your child and his in your backs. Take and eat the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and eat. The true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin.
take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and eat the body of Christ, given for you. We pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faithful and faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. <laughs>